Whole. Now, before listening to this audiobook, you must have read it beforehand in order to revise effectively. And now, you can subscribe to our Instagram handle and all links given in description. 5.3 The leaf The leaf is a lateral, generally flattened structure born on the stem. It develops at the node and bears a bud in its axil. The auxiliary bud later develops into a branch. Leaves originate from shoot apical meristems and are arranged in an acryptal order. They are the most important vegetative organs for photosynthesis. A typical leaf consists of three main parts, leaf base, petiole and lamina, figure 5.7a. The leaf is attached to the stem by the leaf base and may bear two lateral small leaf-like structures called stipules. In monocotyledons, the leaf base expands into a sheath covering the stem partially or wholly. In some leguminous plants the leaf base may become swollen, which is called the pulvinus. The petiole help hold the blade to light. Long thin flexible petioles allow leaf blades to flutter in wind, thereby cooling the leaf and bringing fresh air to leaf surface. The lamina or the leaf blade is the green expanded part of the leaf with veins and veinlets. There is, usually, a middle prominent vein, which is known as the midrib. Veins provide rigidity to the leaf blade and act as channels of transport for water, minerals and food materials. The shape, margin, apex, surface and extent of incision of lamina varies in different leaves. 5.3.1 Venation The arrangement of veins and the veinlets in the lamina of leaf is termed as venation. When the veinlets form a network, the venation is termed as reticulate, figure 5.7b. When the veins run parallel to each other within a lamina, the venation is termed as parallel, figure 5.7c. Leaves of dicotyledonous plants generally possess reticulate venation, while parallel venation is the characteristic of most monocotyledons. 5.3.2 Types of leaves A leaf is said to be simple, when its lamina is entire or when incised, the incisions do not touch the midrib. When the incisions of the lamina reach up to the midrib breaking it into a number of leaflets, the leaf is called compound. A bud is present in the axil of petiole in both simple and compound leaves, but not in the axil of leaflets of the compound leaf. The compound leaves may be of two types, figure 5.8. In a pinnately compound leaf a number of leaflets are present on a common axis, the riches, which represents the midrib of the leaf as in name. In palmately compound leaves, the leaflets are attached at a common point, that is, at the tip of petiole, as in silk cotton. 5.3.3 Phyllotoxy Phyllotoxy is the pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or branch. This is usually of three types, alternate, opposite and old, figure 5.9. In alternate type of phyllotoxy, a single leaf arises at each node in alternate manner, as in China rose mustard and sunflower plants. In opposite type, a pair of leaves arise at each node and lie opposite to each other as in calotropes and guava plants. If more than two leaves arise at a node and form a whorl, it is called old, as in all stonia. 5.3.4 Modifications of leaves Leaves are often modified to perform functions other than photosynthesis. They are converted into tendrils for climbing as in peas or into spines for defense as in cacti, figure 5.10a, b. The fleshy leaves of onion and garlic store food, figure 5.10c. In some plants such as Australian acacia, the leaves are small and short-lived. The petioles in these plants expand, become green and synthesize food. Leaves of certain insectivorous plants such as pitcher plant, Venus flytrap are also modified leaves. Figure 5.10 Modifications of leaf for a. Support, tendril, a, p, b, protection spines, b, cactus, c, storage, fleshy leaves c, onion. 5.4 The inflorescence of flower is a modified shoot wherein the shoot apical meristem changes to floral meristem. Internodes do not elongate and the axis gets condensed. The apex produces different kinds of floral appendages laterally at successive nodes instead of leaves. When a shoot tip transforms into a flower, it is always solitary. 
the arrangement of flowers on the floral axis is termed as inflorescence. Depending on whether the apex gets developed into a flower or continues to grow, two major types of inflorescences are defined, racemose and cymose. In racemose type of inflorescences the main axis continues to grow, the flowers are born laterally in an acryptal succession, figure 5.11. In cymose type of inflorescence the main axis terminates in a flower, hence is limited in growth. The flowers are born in a basipetal order, figure 5.12.